Hi, I'm Mike and this is Mikeonomics. This episode I want to take a deeper look into the CCFF. I briefly spoke about it in episode 1 where I reviewed the speech given by Rishi Sunak on 17th of March, but today I'll give a more in-depth breakdown of what it is, how it operates, and we can also take a look at the corporations that are using it. So, the CCFF is the COVID Corporate Financing Facility and was introduced on 17th of March 2020 to provide additional help to firms to bridge through COVID-19 related disruption to their cash flows. The CCFF will provide funding to businesses by purchasing commercial paper of up to one year maturity issued by firms making a material contribution to the UK economy. It will help businesses across a range of sectors to pay wages and suppliers. Now under normal circumstances, i.e. pre-COVID, corporations will often take out short-term financing to cover wages, inventories and other short-term liabilities. This financing is obtained in return for a promise to pay or a promissory note, which will pay a fixed rate of interest to the lender as well as payment of the initial loan at expiry. This operates very similar to a bond. A commercial paper is almost always used for short-term funding because there are much better suited loan structures available for longer-term loans. So what we saw in February and March 2020 was that lenders weren't lending. Companies were being forced to close, workforces were being sent home and companies suddenly lost their revenue. Because of this, banks and other lenders wouldn't take the risk of providing loans to corporations, especially when the loans are unsecured and based on the promise to pay only. The CCFF was implemented to remove the risk for banks and other lenders by guaranteeing 100% of the loans issued to the corporations. The way the CCFF operates is the corporation seeking a short-term loan approaches an eligible bank or lender. Now it's normally the same bank that they'll get their financing arrangements from anyway, but it could be any eligible bank or lender that's operating in this CCFF scheme. The bank then agrees the term of the loans with the corporation now the term will basically consist of the loan amount, the length of the loan and the interest rate to be paid. Once the loan details are agreed, the lender credits the customer's account and now has the commercial paper as an asset in return for the loan. Up to this point, nothing is different to how commercial paper normally operates, apart from the government guaranteeing 100% of course. The CCFF kicks in when the bank or lender then sells the commercial paper to the Bank of England who purchases the commercial paper with newly created central bank reserves. I need to explain central bank reserves here because it's a term that often goes unnoticed and I can't help but think it was named in such a way that it would go unnoticed. The reason I think that is, is central bank reserves is one of the ways that the Bank of England creates money. Now I'll explain. The bank or lender who just made the loan to the company sells the asset called commercial paper to the Bank of England and in exchange they credit the bank or lender's account at the Bank of England with the corresponding pound sterling value that they create for that specific purpose. For example, if Corporation A got a loan of £1 billion from Bank A, Bank A would then sell the commercial paper asset to the Bank of England, who would credit Bank A's account at the Bank of England with £1 billion created for the purpose of this transaction. From there, the corporation that is effectively borrowed from the Bank of England will continue to pay interest to the bank or lender and is required to pay back the initial amount at the expiry date of the loan. Should they not be able to do this, the loss will be to the UK, not the bank or lender. So that's how the CCFF operates. Let's take a quick look at who's been using it. So the Bank of England have been publishing the CCFF usage details every Thursday as of June the 4th since the HM Treasurer in the Bank of England had decided to make the scheme more transparent. Here we have the results and usage data report from the Bank of England website. There's lots of juicy stuff here, but today we're interested in the CCFF, which is just here. The first line here shows us the total amount of commercial paper bought by the Bank of England since Thursday last week. Second line shows the amount of commercial paper bought minus the amount that has been paid back so therefore the amount that is currently borrowed. The third line shows how much has been approved to be lent. Companies will have a line of credit that they can draw upon and will not draw on the loan until required in order to avoid unnecessary interest. This line represents how much is available to be drawn on. 
The fourth line shows the number of companies that have been approved for the scheme with the line below showing the number that have outstanding commercial paper. The fifth line shows those that are in the process of being approved. So there's been 1.3 billion of commercial paper purchased by the Bank of England from banks and other lenders since last Thursday with a total outstanding purchases of 18.6 billion. 76 billion has been approved with 63 businesses currently having outstanding commercial paper held by the CCFF. Now let's take a look at these companies. I've sorted it by highest to lowest and I'll pick out a couple but I'll leave it on there for you to have a look at and see if there are any on there that take your interest. So BASF have the most outstanding commercial paper with one billion pounds. Now remember these are short term loans and the maximum term is one year so all these loan amounts are expected to be paid back within a maximum of 12 months from the start of the loan. The last I saw the CCFF intended to do purchases of commercial paper for one year but purchases towards the end of that would still have a 12 months term for the loan itself just the purchase process of the CCFF would stop after a year. But BASF are out in front or behind however you want to view it but they're a massive company with a 2019 revenue of nearly 60 billion euros. They're a German chemical company, but they employ around 850 people in 13 locations in the UK. So that's why they're eligible for the CCFF. I'm not going to go through them all, but I'd like to highlight that I see airline companies, so EasyJet, Ryanair, British Airways, there's hotel and leisure companies listed, Intercontinental Hotels Group, Bourne Leisures, RCL Cruises, Stagecoach, there's some automotive and manufacturing too. So I see a lot of industries that I'd expect to see on here. There's some I've never heard and a couple more I want to point out. So Tottenham Hotspur, Stadium Limited. Obviously no one's going to football matches so Spurs' brand new expensive stadium isn't bringing in any revenue. And unfortunately I see Greg's on there so I hope that's not a sign of terrible things to come in the sausage roll market. So that'll do it for the companies for now but I'll keep track of them and may even get some sort of chart going to track it over time. And um, that was the CCFF. I hope I've made it clear and given you some information to take away, which will help your understanding of these matters in general. The schemes with the Bank of England all work in very similar ways, and it's an interesting insight into one of the aspects of money creation. I just want to say I hope to get up to date on this channel soon and start analysing more recent events and announcements, so I'll get a few more videos out on the measures. I'll certainly do one on the C-bills and the increased purchases of UK government bonds and non-financial investment grade corporate bonds. Once we've gone through that, that should put us in a good position to understand and interpret the Bank of England and, and Treasury reports going forward. But no doubt they'll, they will need some further explanations, which I'm keen to do. It's the whole purpose of this. So thank you very much for watching. I'm Mike and this has been Mike Economics.